How's it going, everybody? This is Derek Crook with Count Fortune. Really want to thank you guys for all the good support you guys have been showing on my latest videos, all the uranium documentaries I've been putting out. This video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to just talk to you face to face about the uranium market. We had a big red day, not only in the uranium market, but in the overall sector. But we're going to talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about SPUT. It was one of the only green stocks today at the last minute at the end of the day. And the uranium spot price kind of went down about a quarter today. They pulled their bids. When they're trading at a discount, they can't raise. So they got to be at a premium. So we'll probably see that in the next few days, hopefully. But uh, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'm going to continue doing these. And that's just my way of knowing you guys actually like these videos. Uh, we'll jump right into it. We'll go first to the my uranium sheet here. We'll see that pretty much everything today was red. You know, we can go down into this. The top here, I just pulled it up, but they were actually trading right at the end of the day. They went green, but we had a pretty big pullback in uranium stocks. But as you can see, we are still up very, very large, obviously overall, but not just overall, just in the last month, a lot of these stocks have ran. So, you know, you're going to see some pullbacks, but the overall market has gone red today. Uh, a lot of people are worried. I'm not too worried. I kind of saw a lot of this coming. But the thing is, is I want to position myself in things that I still think are undervalued. And, you know, the uranium sector still is, you know, the spot price still in, you know, just barely $50. So we, we need the spot price to rise a lot more to get production going. So, you know, these things really, you know, pull back like this. It's not too crazy. The overall market, like I said, kind of probably had something to do with it as well. But the stock I really do want to talk about today is Rolls Royce. Now, Rolls-Royce, it, it's probably a stock you've probably heard of, you know, most people have, but it's very cheap right now. And, you know, I've actually worked on Rolls-Royce's engines for uh, the small boats that we had in the Coast Guard because I was an engineer uh, halfway through. Once I got hurt, when I was doing stuff with like helicopters and search and rescue, I switched to the small boat stuff and uh, it was a lot of fun, but their their engines were very high quality so they were like 1800 horsepower uh for our little 45 foot small response boats and uh the thing was is this stock it's it's just been beaten down now i'll go into really kind of why i i kind of want to be in this sector now uh you know in rolls royce is because they're kind of moving into the nuclear sector so in this video that rolls royce put out what they're wanting to do they're wanting to build small modular reactors on possibly the moon and even Mars. And these are nuclear powered. And the other thing they want to do is nuclear thermal propulsion systems. So these will get us to Mars a lot faster. Now, a lot of this might have sounded like crazy talk years ago, but with what's happened with SpaceX and Jeff Bezos, you know, what's going on all around the space move countries really looking to to get back into space they're really wanting to do mining on the moon and it's really kind of crazy because remember this is a little far off but what you really got to look at in stocks are stocks that are really looking to kind of rebrand themselves big stocks like this but that can push into a new sector and push into literally space and you know that have been beaten down like this you know it's a dollar something the stock you know dollar fifty I think that they could get the stock price back to $20 with a big movement in, in this sector, obviously, this you know small modular reactor, getting a lot of support and getting things going with it. Because just the story, it should be trading, you know, it could be trading like something like space, you know, the, the same stock with, you know, the same type of outlook, even though they're not like making money in that sector, which they are making money, but they're not necessarily making money, obviously, yet in the small modular reactor sector in space. And but where they plan to go with this could be a massive, massive, like bigger, pretty much than anything if they if they were able to pull it off. But I do like the story. I like stocks that are, are looking to do this. And, you know, just from their from the way it looks, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people that support SpaceX, you know, if they somehow teamed up with SpaceX because they're teaming up with similar things with the U.S. government, the Australian government and obviously the United Kingdom, their government. And they're looking to build uh, these new uh, they're helping with nuclear powered submarines, which was one of the big things why the stock kind of moved, I think about four or 5% in the last like week. 
you know, and this is just a big stock that hasn't really moved much. Uh, but like I said, the this company, they're not just in, obviously, you know, they're not just in this space. They all, they all Most of their stuff comes from the uh, civil aerospace and the defense here. As you see, everything's about 11.8 billion euros. So this is, uh, you know, this is not like just a, a brand new spec company. Like they, they've, they're doing a lot. Like I said, uh, you know, they're a lot bigger in other sectors. Uh, and the small modular reactor is what really caught my attention. I really like that. I like that they're, you know, pushing for obviously this, you know, ESG movement, enabling net zero, uh, you know, carbon. And it's really, really neat, you know, and I think this type, this company could really rebrand itself, could really move on. So I took a small position uh, today, about 25,000 shares today. Um, one thing I do, I do want them to do, hopefully, is do a, a reverse split. I think they need to get rid of a lot of shares. I think there's like close to 8 billion shares. And I mean, the balance sheet, everything's, it doesn't look bad. Like nothing on this stock, if you just look here, the market cap, 12 billion, you know, the Ford PE, 2.43. And, you know, I just think the stock's just been beaten down. Got about 2.9 billion cash. Um, you know, for what they do, what they what the company brings in, it's it's definitely should be trading, I think, higher, a lot higher. You know, in the past year, it's just been beaten down, like I've said. But this company will probably start to see a lot better numbers, the revenue coming in within the next year or so as things kind of settle, hopefully. But, you know, at a price like this, I just couldn't couldn't pass it up. And just them starting to push this new SMR thing, I think it deserves support. So one thing I do think that is great with this company is we are going to obviously be going to space, SpaceX. And we do need nuclear reactors in space for this energy. If you're going deep space travel, you're going to need it. And, you know, we, they're making a lot of sci-fi movies about this. That's one thing that, you know, if you can see a lot of movies and shows starting to pick up about this, it's going to change really a lot of people's outlook on, on space travel. People will support it more. Uh, you know, when you see movies on Netflix and TV shows all about this, you know, they'll probably see uh, us, you know, as a society, we, we are a lot more likely to see a moon base, you know, because now people can actually somewhat visually see it, but there is technology out there that could get us there and keep us there. And it really is nuclear. And I think that uh, this company, Rolls Royce, it's not, like I said, it's not uh, a massive mover. I don't think it's gonna do 100% gain in a day. It's not like a uranium stock where it can really move like crazy. But I think long-term, this one's something that, you know, for a dollar fifty, I think we could easily see 20 bucks very, very quickly if things kind of turn around again for the company. They can get those numbers up a little bit. And if they if they really were smart, they I think they would do a reverse split, maybe try to list on the New York Stock Exchange, because obviously it's not trading on the New York Stock Exchange yet. As you can see the ticker, R Y C E F. Now they do have two versions of this, the F. That's the foreign one, which has no dividend, and that's the one I got. Um, I, I really don't like when a company gives dividends, I you know especially if they're really trying to grow. I like a company that could somehow be a 100 bagger, and usually those type of stocks don't do dividends. But overall, I like the stock, and I will be adding more as uh, as the time goes on, and more you know news comes out with what they're actually doing. Uh, because they got like a billion and a half uh, for this R&D, you know, development for small modular reactors and everything. So that's going to be interesting. Plus the the nuclear submarine deal. If they get this, it's going to really boost things back up for the company. So it's I think it's a very, you know, it's, it's a small bet for me. It's not something I'm like loading up as much as I am on actual uranium stocks. But it is nice to see more support for nuclear and we'll probably see a lot more news on that, especially if nuclear continues to get a lot of good publicity, you know, in a lot of areas. Obviously, if you see my documentary, the a lot of the billionaires are building new reactors, a lot of these new advanced reactors. So it's good. It's good for the whole industry. And I think it deserves our support. So in the next few days, we're probably going to see a little more red in the market, I think, because of what's going on on Wednesday, the Fed meets and we might have a little bit of volatility just still in the uranium market. I hope Sput can get that those bids back in there and start pushing the uranium price back up. 
But you know, we'll we still have plenty of time. This is we're we're very early in this bull market for uranium, and I think that there will continue to be pull, see these pullbacks, but we'll probably see gaps back up as well. But uh, one thing is I'm trying to answer everyone's questions, but if you guys really want to get a hold of me, the best way is through Discord here. It's just a lot faster. A lot of times, there's, if there's a lot of comments on like YouTube or Twitter or wherever you follow me, it's really hard to reply back because there's just so many, so many notifications. But this way, like as you can see here, I literally can get the notifications. And if you're in here, you can literally ping me and I can see it. And it's a lot easier to search for those too. If you guys want to get old of me, that's the best way to get it. But uh, if you guys like these videos, I'll continue to keep covering uranium, obviously. But please hit the like and subscribe button below. And until next time.